so I had a little drive around this morning because I fancied a bit of pike fishing. Um, the rivers are still pretty high around the area, um, but this is now, it's, it's really muddy, um, but it's not as high as the rivers are, so I think it's a really good idea to give it a go. Um, static dead bait ledged on the bottom on alarms um, because basically that's what it was last time I was fishing and I couldn't be bothered to shake it over so that's the way it's going to be today. anyway and I didn't have time to go and do a click and collect um, and I don't have much in the freezer apart from some whiting I caught on the last sea fishing trip where I went on that one's got a poop hanging out of it um, so like it or lump it pike this is what we're fishing with today okay so I'm just quickly going to talk through the setup if you want a future video on the setup then just leave it in the comments and I can make one later on um, so these are coral And then I've got these Shimano 5500 CI4s. These are a bit special. Um, so yeah, I've got these on my cart rods as well. So I um, I bought them two sets, two for pike fishing, two for carp fishing, and extra small so I can change them over if I want to. Um, and then I've got um, 50 pound braid on there as well. So um, I always, I always uh, led you on a running lead system, so I will show you that. Just using a light two ounce lead today. Hoping to catch a big pike, obviously. Probably catch a load of jacks. I don't even think I'd feel it if one of those trebles went in my finger. So, that's something I suppose. Look at that. Then the other thing is having a rubber net is really important when pike fishing. 
you don't believe me, take a cot there, pipe fishing, see how that works out for you. Because I made that mistake in the early days. And um, pike love to roll themselves up in the net, especially if they're really lively. They will just spin in this. And the good thing about this is you can just untangle them really easily. The inner carp there is lethal and you'll be there sometimes for ages. Usually you have to cut the net to be honest. Um, so yeah, a big, wide rubber net is ideal. Let's just see if we can get a fish in it today. It looks like today's nice and clean and normal video. <laughs> so I thought I'd just let just say to you why, why I ledger when I'm pike fishing most of the time. I do float fish sometimes, but mostly I do ledger. Um, and the reason for that is, although some people, Alex, say that it's carping for um, pike, which is understandable because, you know, I'm using fire alarms, etc. Um, but I find that this, I get the most sensitivity fishing this way, just in my opinion. Um, I feel like I get a better bite indication. I very, very, very rarely have a deep hook pike fishing this way. Whereas um, a lot of time when you're float fishing, the float's gone and it's away and they've picked up all the slack line and they've swallowed the hook already and you do end up with deep hook pike. Um, so this is why I fish this way. I find that Dow Kims are the best for the job when it comes to sensitivity and using drop back indicators um, just because of the technology that they have in them. So this is definitely my preferred method and sometimes when you're float fishing as well um, and say you're fishing with your friends or you're, not on your, or you're on your own and you've got to watch a lot of floats it can be it can be like oh there's just too much to watch all of the time whereas like this you can really concentrate on you know what spots you're looking at you can have a look at the rest of the river and really decide so for me this is my preferred method although some people say it's carpet for pike but show you how sensitive it is so as soon as a fish touches that bait the sensitivity is really you can see like I would have an immediate indication as to when something's um, having a go at the bait or showing some interest so it's a really good method. Okay, I've been in this spot for just over an hour now had a couple of recasts no fish so um, I'm thinking it's time to move on to the next spot now because I think if there were any pike here they would have um, they would have smelt my bait and um, got on it by now so I'm going to have a little move up and try a bit further up and see what happens that's it for today um, I really wanted to get a little snowy pike picture um, but it wasn't to be. You win some, you lose some. Today I didn't even lose any. Just lost. Uh, a few days ago I came out pike fishing and it was really snowy. The snow is now melted um, so I'm going to give it another go. Um, I'm better prepared today so I've actually been to the tackle shop and I've actually got some bait um, and some oils. The river is still a little bit coloured so that's why I'm going to go for the, for the oil for the extra attraction um, but I feel better prepared today so I'm hoping that it's going to be a successful trip so I'm just going to get everything ready and pop the rods out and see what happens. Fishing a static dead bait on the bottom you always want to hook in your tail first um, because pike turn it in their mouth um, so you want everything as it goes eats it head first you want everything to go into the pike's mouth straight not the easiest to get in but that's good because it won't come off on the cast there you go and then I'm going to inject some oil into this so a little trick that I use is pour some of the oil into the cap um, because it's really hard to get the syringe into the bottle um, so you can just go straight in and also I don't use a needle because needles can end up in fingers and you don't really want to be injecting yourself with lamprey oil so get your syringe and then just pop it up the fish's butt give it a good squirt and then you filled your fish up with oil ready to be eaten by a 30 pound pike 
chance to be a flying thing. Okay, in the bit of river that I fish, there's quite a lot of swan mussels and zebra mussels and abrasive um, stuff in, in the river. So I, I fish this leader. It does look quite hefty and it is. It's um, an abrasive 60 pound mono leader. And then it goes up to this knot here, this little whipping knot. If you want me to show you how I attach these two bits of uh, braid and mono together with this knot, just leave it in the comments below and I can do a video about how I've done that. So the reason this knot works really well is because the ceramic run ring can run straight over the top of that without catching or any resistance to it at all. on it. See there? If you're fishing for pike and it's full of leeches, just try to get those off before you release it. Lovely. Right, let's pop it back. Pike. 
I'm gonna wear a glove on this one. Lots of leeches in here. Look at that. What a stunner. Bloody hell. Mwah. Beautiful. Been out about 10 minutes on a new spot. Um, and yeah, it sort of had a, a couple of taps and then it stopped and then it just went. It's got an absolutely gorgeous pike and it's very fat for a river pike as well. Like a lot of the pike that I catch out here are really long and lean. Um, this one, she's really got some depth to her. So I'm going to just let her have a little rest in the net and then weigh her, do a couple of pictures and you can get a real good look at her. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm really pleased. What a stunning fish, eh? Yeah, beautiful. This one's better. She's lively. She's a lively girl. So this trip has so been worth it. So beginning of the week, I came out snowing blanked give it another go today um, and I've just had this gorgeous 15 just over 15 she goes um, I've let her have a nice old rest in the net so she's very lively now so there you go look at that that's a proper pike really deep and beautiful lovely colours those eyes are just something else what a creature eh Thank you. Got her back. What a beautiful fish. Away she goes to sulk. Very pleased with that. 